Hello everyone, welcome back to our 100 day challenge and today day 6 where we are going to talk about containers and containerization. So it's all about containers today. So containers are actually revolutionizing software development and deployment because of its isolation, portability, efficiency and scalability. So from development to production, containers are driving business innovations and growth and trust me guys right now whatever application and services you are using most of the services are hosted on containers so it's a new place or we can say new technology to host your application and services after the virtual machines or cloud vms it's a modern days hosting platform for any application and services so it is very important and it's in trend if you go to over the internet you can get it either you are using netflix you are using youtube or you are using amazon or any web application you are using most of the new application which is modern are hosted on these containers only so we are going to deep dive into containers concept how the underlying technology works and uh, what makes it more powerful than the traditional hosting platform so let's start now it's time to understand containers okay so containers are a lightweight and portable solution for packaging and running your application so that means it is the smallest unit where you can host your application so uh, why it's a lightweight because it is using only the component which is required to run your application why it is portable because it uh, it is platform independent and you can run the same containers or different platform and it will give the same outcome it's not dependent on the platform where you are building this uh, containers and how it is packaged and run the applications for example that we will deep dive in detail the only thing you need to understand for example it's a container it will have the required binary to run your application so if it is your application that in the same container you will be having the libraries or the dependency which is needed for this application to run similarly it will require the required files and all so the thing is container is one one and only we can say the small version of vm everything is running the only thing it is using the best operating system that we will understand how it is abstract the operating system and the all so in today's session we will explore the basics of containerization popular containerization platform and real world use cases for containers so these are the things we are going to explore today so let's start before deep diving the underlying technology of containers let's understand how it is different than virtualization so the thing is if we talk about the virtual machines here we have the comparison between virtual machines and containers these containers can be anything like a docker container or container d containers there are multiple container runtime that we will talk about which creates the, the containers but here we took the example of docker containers so if we talk about the virtual machine how the infrastructure is built we have a physical server means your physical host in your case of vmware it can be esx okay esx esx so on top of that normally what happens we have two types of concept here in virtualization either we can use this hypervisor directly on physical host or we can run this hypervisor on top of our operating system it's all depend on us Better this uh, running this hypervisor it help us to abstract this, this physical box into virtual machine that means here these virtual machines are built out of the resources which we are having for this physical host so here the dividition or we can say the abstraction is on the host so we can say it's a host level abstraction host layer abstraction we can say okay uh, so what we do we divide this uh, host into chunks of vms and on that vm we can run our os we can run our code means libraries and dependency what we require and top of that we can run our application this is about virtualization if we talk about the containerization it's the same like you you can have your host machine you can have your operating system but here in place of hypervisor we use container engines so in this case we are having docker engine here that help us to abstract the operating system means the resources what it is taking it is taking from the 
host operating system not from this host so this containers is having the ability to utilize whole resources from this host but in vms we can't use it if we give the resources like it will use only two cpu four gigs of ram and 100 gigs of data drive from this host then it will use only that one but here in this case if needed more it can utilize the resources from this physical host so you can understand that if your underlying infrastructure is huge you have the more flexibility to scale right but there are something through which we can limit these resources but ideally it have uh, it is having the access of full host the only thing it's a uh, uh, do the dividation on the host operating system which we are running so if we talk about in one line container abstract at the os layer virtualization abstract at the host layer so this is the difference between the virtualization and container so here if you see in the containers you don't see any guest os right no guest os requ required that's why there is no need to boot any operating system to run this containers that's why it is too much fast but on the other hand if you want to run your virtual machine first the operating system will run once it will functional properly then only it will execute our application but on the other hand containers don't require these things that's why containers are best in terms of speed in terms of efficiency in terms of isolation everything so this is the future of our modern infrastructure so far we have talked a lot about containers and its uh, benefits but uh, let's have a clear picture in uh, this screen itself if we talk about the container what exactly are these so so container is a lightweight standalone executable package that can run your application and contains everything an application need to run it which includes your application code dependency and library so these are the things it include and help us to execute the application now let's understand how these containers help us as it provides isolation so so containers provide a high level of isolation and security between applications sharing the same hosting system so that means your containers are running on the same host but still they provide the isolation these applications can't come connect to each other if we want it's all depend how we want the connectivity it's so it's all about uh, learning about containers networking i'll talk you about the networking modes in few minutes but for the timing that uh, just understand it can provide the isolation if, if still they are using the same host and sharing the same host for the resources still they provide the isolation next thing it provides the portability containers are designed to be portable and can run consistently that means it's independent from every platform across any infrastructure these infrastructure can be your physical server virtual server or cloud environment wherever you want to run this, these containers it provides the same consistency while executing or running the application next to benefit it provides efficiency and scalability because they use shared resources and quickly spin up or down as per needed that means whenever we want it can run in a second normally it takes millisecond but let's talk about in second it can be up and it can go down whenever we want so the disposal is also easy provisioning is also quick so that's why it's very efficient and scalable now it's time to talk about containerization concept so the thing is uh, containerization works on a simple concept like build sip and run so these are the th three things that normally comes into containerization first we need to build the containers then it will be as we know that it is portable so it can be shipped wherever we want to run and in the last we need to execute it so the thing is it build once and run anywhere so containers provide an abstraction layer between the application and the underlying infrastructure which makes it possible to run this application in any of the environment which we already discussed like physical virtual or cloud environment so next thing about containers is containerization is the process of packaging an application and its all dependencies as a container so once it is packaged the container can be shipped easily to any infrastructure to run so what it holds it holds your application it holds the required libraries and 
library and dependencies so it holds everything once it is packaged it can ship anywhere and then it can run on any environment so it's like build ship and run concept guys now let's understand containers network it's time to learn about how communicate containers communicate with each other so networking is actually an important aspect of containerization as it allows containers to communicate with each other and also with external systems so if you want to communicate between the containers if you want to communicate containers to your host then also you need it if you want to communicate containers which are hosted on different host then also you need this networking if we talk about in docker we are having three modes okay so there are three modes in first mode is bridge next is host third one is overlays so what is the difference actually so first one is bridge this is the default networking mode in docker here we are talking about in terms of docker in our next session, we are going to deep dive into Docker, but let's understand how containers actually communicate with each other if we talk an example of Docker. So this is the default networking mode as I mentioned, and in this mode, each container is assigned a unique IP that can help us to communicate with other containers on the same bridge network. If other containers are on the same bridge network, that means we it will be by default communicate next we are having option of host so in the host mode container shares the host networking stack which means that container uses the host ip address and network interfaces so here in this case it will use its uh, host ip address and network interface ka, which can be useful for performance sensitive so this can be useful for performance sensitive application that require direct access to the host network so whenever you need to communicate with your host you should use this mode okay host networking mode next is overlay networking mode in the overlay networking mode you can create a virtual network okay virtual network that is called multiple host okay means uh, this virtual network which you are creating it should include more than one host and so your containers from one host can communicate with other host easily so here our containers are hosted on different host these host can be anything but we want to communicate these two containers that's why for this case we need overlay host or uh, overlay networking mode so each networking mode here which we discussed has its own advantage and disadvantage okay but networking mode you choose will always depend on your specific use case so for example if you want bridge mode it's useful for application that require isolation while host mode is required for useful for application that require direct access so in this case it is communicated between one container here in this one it can share the same network so both the containers which is using this mode can communicate easily when you are trying to communicate between different hosts container then you need to use overlay container so these are the different mode we are having for containers networking in terms of docker so now it's time to look for the different container runtimes available in the market to for better understanding so what are actually these container runtime do so the thing is container runtime is actually responsible for executing executing and so container runtime is actually responsible for executing and maintaining or managing the containers on the host so we are having different container runtimes from different companies in the market the most popular one you already aware about docker that we discussed in this video but there are multiple like container d we are having we are having podman we are having builtkit we are having runc rkt vagrant Vilda. So there are many container runtimes we are having. It every tool has their own advantage and disadvantage. It's all depend on your usability, your use cases, your project, what you want to achieve. Accordingly, you accordingly you need to study and use that particular container runtime for your project. So these are the one which I highlighted. Just go through them and explore more. But uh, tomorrow we are going to cover Docker in detail. So now it's time to learn about common use cases where we can use the containers. So the thing is right now, you know, we are using microservices architecture or we can say we are leading towards microservices architecture in all the fields rapidly. 
So the thing is here we are dividing our application components in multiple chunks so every team can work on individual components so it is faster and make it easier to maintain. So it's a main use cases to use container. Next we are using multi-cloud or hybrid cloud environment. So containers offers the ability to deploy on any platform consistently so it's always better to use whatever suits it in terms of platform so containers are best used for that one next is devops and ci cd pipeline containers streamline the development testing and deployment process so it's to make it easier and more reliable so now earlier it was not like we were not having the stable container but now there are many technologies which are providing stability so the thing is now the use of containers are rapidly growing and it is helping devops and ci cd pipeline as well the next thing the big chunks you know about data science machine learning big data analytics so the thing is containers can be used to run data science and big data analytics workload as well with providing a portable scalable and isolated environment for data exploration and analysis so these these are the most common and very important i can say the huge cases what we can use for our container or through our containers now let's understand the best practices for containerization what we should follow if you are a developer you should follow these you should use a single process per container that means you should avoid to run multiple processes within a same container because the thing is as we know that containers are a mutual infrastructure where what happens if there is something wrong with this container actually we don't repair it we discard it and then we run it again on a different container the same thing similar so that's a good that you always use one process per container keep containers lightweight always try to avoid heavy lifting of any containers so it will be easily portable uh, next is you should define dependency explicitly what is the purpose of using that dependency or library next thing you should use environment variable whenever it is possible for your conf configuration next thing if you are a operations guy or operator then you should follow the least principle of least privileges that means you should only give the permission to the required people not all the people within your company next is always monitor and log container activities that will help us if there is anything wrong so we can fix it at early stage ensure proper network segmentation is assigned and the last thing you should use secure container registries for you your containers so these are the few best practices in general we need to follow in day-to-day -day life or in our it company now it's time to talk about some future trends going on as per google in container technology so it can be used in machine learning and ai you know the ai is rapidly growing since december 2022 from the last 10 months if you have gone through the internet and there are many viral videos there are many viral tools and the content related to ai is huge now and the people are drastically changing their way to think and trying to utilize ai wherever it is possible that's why we saw some firing in different organization because they are still thinking where they can use and optimize their workforce so they are they are planning to use this one and containers are helping this in machine learning and ai based companies as well next thing server in serverless com Computing, as we know, we are not focusing much on owning the infrastructure. We are trying to build the application which are serverless, that means which are independent to underlying infrastructure. So containers are the best in that one. The last thing it can be used or the future trend which we can see for the container technology is blockchain and distributed ledgers. So containers can be used to deploy and manage blockchain and distributed ledger applications which provide a secure, portable and resilient environment for decentralized applications. So wherever we see decentralized application or distributed, we can directly use containers for that. So these are the future trends we can see in container technology. So guys that's it in this video i hope you find this video helpful and engaging and help you to learn something new related to containers and containerization join me tomorrow where we will deep dive into dockers and related technologies so keep learning keep exploring and keep transforming see you in next video tomorrow